All right, uh, we'll call the select board meeting for uh, Wednesday, December 15th, 2021 to order. Uh, this meeting's being recorded. All votes will be taken via roll call and in attendance is David Phil, Jane Nevin Smith, John Weskevitz, and Amy Parsons. Joyce will not be here tonight. And so first thing on the agenda is consent agenda. We have warrants AP2224, AP2224S, AP2223, AP22, I'm guessing that's supposed to be 23S, um, AP2223V, PR221, PR2212, and we have part-time financial assistant appointment, uh, Mellis Balik Solar. Uh, Hadley Police Department part-time dispatcher appointments. We'll pull that out. Uh, declaration of surplus property, DPW 1997 Stowe R2000 roller with homemade trailer. Declaration of surplus property, DPW Crown Pump Model 4LB40 with Wisconsin VH4D engine. Declaration of surplus property, DPW 2010 Ford um, Expedition. Declaration of surplus property fire 2007 Ford 500 sedan to be used by fire department for extrication training, Jaws of Life. We have a cemetery appointment for Catherine Kentfield. Hadley Police Department Officer Resignation, Harry Santiago, effective 12 22 21, and a proclamation for Stanley Phil. I move, we accept. Seconds. All right. Sorry. Motion, motion by Jenny right and uh, second by Amy. Any discussion on those items? Uh, is the discussion just amongst the select board? I just wanted to throw one quick thing in there so everybody's aware. Uh, the um, Ford Expedition that's in there, just for um, clarification purposes, that is a cruiser. Um, Scott and Chris were just nice enough to do the paperwork for us, but that is one of the old cruisers that we are gonna sell on Municipid. So just wanted everybody to know that. Okay, sounds good. All right, and if there's not anything else, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call by Phil? Yes. Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yeah, thank you. Okay, and uh, Chief, do you wanna take it away for the appointments? Uh, yeah, I actually have um, my, our dispatch supervisor, Megan Cahill is on the call. Um, and I had, think I have, we have one of, unless name is the other, uh, the other dispatcher. Um, we have one of the dispatchers here. And since Meg did um, most of the work on locating these individuals, it's uh, becoming as hard to find public safety dispatchers as it is to find police officers. Meg did most of the work, uh, so I would like for her to read the bios um, on who you would be, uh, who would be, we would be recommending for um, hiring tonight. So Meg, go ahead, take it away. Good evening. So the first person I'd like to recommend to be hired as a part-time dispatcher for our agency is Melissa Sika. Melissa is a resident of nearby Belchertown for the past few years, including during the pandemic. She has been a rural mail carrier for the United States Postal Service, where she is responsible for her own route and all that that entails. Prior to that, she was the owner and operator of a local Italian restaurant, Pizzeria. She has a long history of serving the community and has expressed an interest and flexibility in working whatever shifts we have available in order to have the opportunity to now serve the community in the capacity of being a part-time emergency dispatcher. Okay. If we get a, you can go ahead and read the next one if you want. We'll do that. Okay. The same time. Our second candidate is Daniela Romeo. Danielle is originally from Eastern Massachusetts where she attended school, including obtaining an associate's degree in criminal justice. Her early work history includes customer service and home health care. For the last five years, Daniela has been on the front line as a phlebotomist in a hospital setting. 
where she has had to rely on her attention to detail and ability to remain calm under pressure. She has remained interested, however, even while in the medical field and public safety, and is hoping to draw on her education to aid her in becoming our newest part-time emergency dispatcher. Okay. Um, could I get a motion, please? I'll move. So moved. Oh. Amy second. moved. I'll second. I'll, okay. All right. <laughs> motion by Amy, second by Jane. And do either Melissa or Daniela, or if you're here, do you want to say anything before we vote? No, nobody ever wants to say anything, David. I know. <laughs> I give them the chance, though. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, congrats uh, to the new dispatchers. Welcome. Thank you all. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we have 3.1 public comments. If you're here for public comments, uh, turn on your camera, wave at us. We're going to limit this to 15 minutes. Please limit your comments to three minutes each so that everyone has an opportunity to speak. Anybody here for public comments? Here, Chief, how are we doing staff-wise, with dispatchers and police? How are we doing staff-wise? Not great. Um, we have two vacancies right now. Uh, and uh, as, as you all know, I've been trying to keep you posted on all the goings on of, uh, of law enforcement in our uh, in this new day and age. And uh, it's uh, obviously we're trying to compete with uh, every other department out there to bring in some new talent. We have three really good folks uh, working here now as specials that we likely will be able to fill those vacancies with if they stay with us long enough um, to uh, to bring them bring them on. If they don't go to some other police department that you know would for higher pay or whatever it is, um, we were just denied by the MPTC, unfortunately, <clears throat> to bring them on immediately because they are so new to the profession. Uh, the MPTC has a rule that they have to work for at least a year before they will give them a waiver. We have certainly uh, plans to um, on how to move forward with this. You know, we have to we have a backup plan and then a backup backup plan um, as best we can. They can work as part timers, um, but you know we need a we need a final solution here. And I think uh, you know. I, Hope I've kept everybody up to speed and Carolyn certainly is up to speed. We've been staying in touch almost daily about where we're headed, but uh, we're staying on top of it. Sounds good. Anybody else public comments? Last call. Okay, we'll keep moving. Uh, let's see, we have police department policy adoption, traffic control officer, and Chief or Mitch? Uh, I can I can do this real quick. Um, another one of the uh, unintended, or actually I can't even say unintended, I don't know what their intentions were when they wrote the police reform bill, to be quite honest with you. Another one of the consequences, I'll just say, of the police reform bill is uh, the change as to whether or not you know departments are going to be able to have and or utilize part-time policing um the very simply this this policy is simply so that we may utilize people who are non-sworn law enforcement officers for traffic direction um, parades uh large-scale special events uh, disaster relief uh, assistance uh, and also, you know, unfilled um, traffic details with Route 9, the Route 9 project coming up uh, and the overworked staff that we have already trying to fill these details and the overworked staff and many of the other agencies that we utilize. We thought it best that before this becomes a problem, it is not an issue just yet, but before it becomes a problem, um, we would approve this policy through the board so that we might utilize some other folks. All the insurance matters are 
uh, written into this policy as the law states and as the law allows, but this is unfortunately another one of the, um, the consequences and the things that we have to do because we just don't have the pool of, of people to pull from anymore. And uh, we can't afford to you know, have our officers working double shifts every single day to make sure that the construction work on Route 9 doesn't slow down. So that's what this policy is for. It's very simple. It's just a traffic direction policy. We will ensure that they are fully trained. We have an officer here who has been certified by the MPTC to teach this, teach these classes. We will likely start with our fire department, but the policy does cover other folks who uh, I decide whether or not it's appropriate that they can be trained and we can utilize them for uh, these types of purposes. Um, the way that the protocol works is that the select board can either vote tonight to accept the policy as you have with all of our other policies, or you can take no action and then in 30 days, because I'm recommending this as a strong chief, it will simply go into effect. Um, that's been the practice in the past, but I just, <clears throat> just throw that out there. So if you choose not to take action, uh, we can still you know, make this happen. Okay. Someone Chief wants Hunter. to make a motion. Chief Hunter. No, no. Second. Our motion by Amy, second by Jane. John, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Chief, are there companies out there that uh, do hire flagmen out uh, similar to the, I know there's some that put out the barrels and the barricades and stuff like that, and they also have flagmen that work for them. Are those contracted out through the contractor or could they be contracted out through the police departments? Uh, as, as far as contracted, the companies themselves would do the contracting for, uh, for flagmen. We wouldn't contract anyone. Um, and the way that the, uh, the law is written, there are only certain roadways that flagmen are allowed to work on. If there's a high enough traffic volume or the speed limit is high enough, the law does not allow for flagmen to work. Um, we can allow that to happen. Um, and that's kind of one of the reasons why we're opening this up a little bit further, make sure that we get all these jobs covered. I know that some of our officers um, looked forward to the extra income from this kind of duty. Is that going to be a problem? Not at all. They have, uh, they have more than they can handle, Jane. Uh, we're, we're trying to, these, these folks wouldn't get a shot at the job until the officers had their choice of, uh, of jobs anyways. So there's no issues there. We're really just trying to okay, make good. We're making, trying to make sure that the infrastructure in town can continue to get repaired and the workers can do it safely. Yep. Great. It is. And, and Jane, you know, the, the problem is they're going to get burned out. This is a three year project. It, it's going to be a major undertaking here that, that it's going to start next year. And everybody's going to have their fill of this, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else, Jennifer, roll call, please. Excuse me. Roll call, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Miskevitz. Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, um, we'll wait on the bylaw committee just for a few minutes. Uh, Jennifer, do you wanna do license renewals right now? Yes, please. Um, Y'all have a list of all of the businesses that have come in after the last meeting, um, which um, it's not a large list, and I do have a list of everybody who has not renewed that I'd like to go over in a moment. Um, but I'm asking for y'all to approve all of the alcohol, common vehicular, skating, entertainment, theater, automatic amusement licenses that are under 22 calendar year on the attached Excel sheet. They're all up to date. Everything's in order. So moved. Second. Motion by Jane, second by Amy. Any discussion on these licenses? Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Devin Smith? Yes. Skevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. And can I go over the, the, the naughties? Oh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's about 11 businesses that have not renewed yet. 
Um, they're not assessed the late fee until uh, December 31st. But um, Panera, Gregory's, the Mullins Center, uh, River Drive Auto Body, Exotic Service and Sales, Exotic Repair and Sales, Boyang Korean Restaurant, the Old Hadley Flea Market, Mitch's Marina, Joy Bowl, and Genji Sushi are the businesses that have not renewed their licenses for the town. So I'll be going around and saying hi to everybody and dropping off license renewal packets for them in person, um, probably Friday and Monday, Tuesday of next week. And hopefully we'll have everybody through for January 4th, 5th, for January 5th. And if they don't get it in by the 31st, it's a hundred dollar late fee, is that what we put on? That is correct. Yep. So we give them lots of chances to, to get it right. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, let's, I don't know if anybody's showing up for the bylaw committee, so let me just do, uh, let's jump down to 4.3 opioid settlement agreement. Select board will discuss participate, participation in the national opioid settlement agreement. There's a deadline of January 2nd, 2022 for towns to register. Um, and the attorney general describes the settlement here, and there's a big long link in board docs if you're interested. So, uh, Carolyn, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Uh, so the attorney general's office, actually, they've been contacting all the cities and towns to get them on board. And it's, um, it's an opportunity to receive settlement funds from two statewide settlements with three opioid distributors, Cardinal, Neckinson, and Amer Amerisource Bergen and opioid maker Johnson & Johnson. And fundings will help communities um, do uh, harm reduction, treatment and recovery efforts across Massachusetts. I did reach out to Chief Mason and our superintendent, Annie, to see you know, um, if this is something that would um, benefit Hadley. And they're certainly supportive of it, but um, it really, at this point, when I reached out to the state, it's kind of unclear exactly um, how much money each community would get. So everybody's supportive of it. But my mo the biggest concern is, was there going to be a lot of paperwork and research and all of that? And I was assured at the state level that that burden wouldn't be placed on the staff. So um, I know that we'll have support from both uh, Mike and Annie. Um, but the my recommendation to the town is to uh, join, uh, become participations participants of that agreement. It is due January 2, 2nd, so it would be great to have your approval tonight, and I will fill out um, all everything that I have to do online to send that in. Can we get a motion to sign on to the settlement agreement? So moved. Second. All right, motion by Amy, second by Jane. And any discussion there? No. Jennifer, roll call. Roll call, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Uskevitz. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And we'll go back up to 4.2 bylaw committee appointment. Select board will appoint the bylaw review committee um, on for uh, until completion of the project with the following members. Jim Maximoski, planning board member, Ann Hudson, community member, Tim Nyhart, community member, Dan Zadonik, board of assessors, Mitch Cook, police department, Mike Spanknable, fire department, Tom Quinlan, building inspector, Jess Spanknable, town clerk. And is any of the residents here? Nope, doesn't look no. like it. You're also gonna use select board liaison, but y'all had not discussed that. I'll throw my hat in the ring for that one. Okay. If anybody else is interested, speak up. Don't, <laughs> don't be quiet just because I said something. <laughs> well, I had, I had said I would do it, but I don't think they need two of us because I think you're fine for it. I just okay. knew they would need somebody. All right. If you really want to do it, you can you can take it. I don't mind. I'd... No, no, that's fine. I seem to have a lot of committees. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if I uh, could get a motion to approve that list of people for the committee. <clears throat> so moved. So moved. 
Fine, second. All right, motion by Jane, <laughs> second by Amy. And uh, Carolyn, you can chime in if you see this any different, but this, we basically need a top to bottom review of our bylaws in all areas. I mean, there's some really outdated stuff and some of it's not available electronically, which all of it should be available electronically today. Um, some is, but uh, we've got a long ways to go. So this is probably going to be a, I would imagine a multi-year process, mm -hmm. um, but we at least need to get started on it. Um, do you have a, an idea of where we would start on this stuff or are we just gonna kind of start from the top and work our way so down? So I do have some contact contacts in the state who've either recently gone through a bylaw review um, and I think I would connect whoever ends up um, rising to be the chair of that committee. I would certainly use that point person to provide all that information to. Any other discussion on this? Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Miskevitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, looks like the last item is town administrator report. I think I'm going to take up the most time tonight. <laughs> so I did. I, I wanted to let you know, um, I, I did share through, um, I notified the select board of this, but I certainly wanted the public to know that um, Representative Dan Carey um, had advocated for the town of Hadley and added an amendment to the ARPA funds, um, which both the House and the Senate approved. And I think that I think it was in the governor's approval, um, I think Monday. Um, and it, so the request uh, that Dan had asked, um, he had reached out kind of, uh, it was down to the wire um, about a month and a half ago when he was, he really uh, worked really hard to see what the town was in need of. And so he is, uh, the, the amount that he got was $100,000 for the trailers, which will bring some relief to our original ARPA funding, which really is, had all been targeted. It will free up 100,000, because if you remember uh, the original ARPA money, we had designated 200,000 for the trailers. So um, it will help us kind of look at some other uh, projects and initiatives that we're, that we're highlighting and that we think those funds would be really useful for. Um, they also gave $50,000 for the police. So um, I just wanted to recognize that. Um, I also wanted to share with you, um, uh, we got a lot of furniture um, donated from Hub International, which is an insurance company in Eastland Meadow. Um, the president, Tim Marini, the president of Hub had let me know that they, they had, they really had some beautiful furniture and they're renovating. And so DPW will got a lot of really nice desks and furniture for the trailers when they're replaced and as well as recreation. We had wanted to get something for public health, but by the time we got there, um, we didn't have, there wasn't as much available, but I will send a letter to um, Hub International to Tim and to thank him on behalf of the select board, if that's okay with you guys, which I'm sure it is. Um, I also, uh, Woodard and Curin has begun the inspections for the dike, which we need in our phase two of the study and the analysis. So they're doing visual assessments with drones. They're on the water looking at the dike and they're using cameras to inspect some of the pipes and the, um, the penetrations of the levee. So I just wanna make sure the public knew if they saw a drone flying around, um, that's probably what it is. Uh, some positive things from not getting two grants this year. As you remember, we didn't get funding for the Mass Works grants uh, for the Route 9 re replacing the pipes. Uh, but Elena Cohen from Senator Comfort's office has been really engaged with that. And we met together with the state uh, to find out kind of how to move forward, what important things to bring into the grant. And we're probably not going to go for funding for that. I think uh, that will have, need to have been funded by the time this money would come in. But Elena and I are going to meet uh, the week of January 1st, January 3rd, to discuss uh, the next submission. So the grant applications are open now. So we're gonna sit down based on our conversation. I'm gonna keep her a part of it the whole time um, to see if that will help us have better standing when we submit that grant. And then the other grant that we did not get was the feasibility study from Mass Development for the Russell School. They also offered to come out and go over it and try to give us some ideas for other funding or other ways to target uh, you know, usage of that building. So they are coming out, um, let's, 
the, I think January 7th, they're coming out. And I've also invited Denise Barstow from the Historical Commission to join me in that meeting so she can listen and um, just be a part of that as well. So it was a bummer we didn't get the grant, but this is the first time I've seen the state actually do this where they come out afterwards and kind of debrief and, and help us brainstorm and give, give some input. So that's all I have here. Okay, um, announcement time. Jane, you have some announcement? Oh, you're muted. Thank you. The Hadley Board of Health has accepted the resignation of our public health nurse, Marge Bernard, effective December 10th. In recognition and appreciation of her 11 years of service to the town of Hadley, we would like to thank her for her hard work and dedication. Her steadfast weekly service to the older adults of Hadley was greatly appreciated. She will be missed by many. The Board of Health has hired a new public nurse part-time, Alyssa Wright, who will begin her tenure on December 13th. She already has. Some of you may have met her already. She's the one who's been doing the COVID testing at the Senior Center, and she was also at the vaccination clinic last Saturday, and we're looking forward to working with her. Okay. Um, I'll just say uh, thanks to Jim and Greg from Park and Rec for uh, getting the skeleton of, uh, or the framework of the ice rink up out behind Russell School. I had a, a bunch of phone calls wondering what is happening behind Russell School. So um, it's, it's an ice rink, hopefully soon, if it ever gets cold. Uh, but that's really the only announcement I have other than next meeting is January 5th. This is our last meeting for 2021. Yep. The Festival of Lights is on Friday also for people that have like there's four different themes. There's like most Hadley, uh, best classic, best themed, and then the Griswold Award. So that's happening on Friday starting at five. Which is, is did people already have to register for that or how is that working? Do you know? Um, I think so initially the website where you were supposed to register was broken or it didn't work um, well, but if you send an email to um, Lauren Trombley um, or the records at how the police department, um, you should still be able to get in because they're still looking for people to do it. What, what are the categories? Um, most Hadley, which is like blue and gold or Hawks or farming or something. And then there's the best classic display, which is typically like all white lights and there's the best theme display. Um, so I did that one. So I'm doing blue Christmas by Elvis Presley. So everything's going to be really blue. Um, and then there's the Griswold award, which is, I think you just be crazy with that one. That's like the, like national lampoon, right? Like yeah, exactly. Christmas vacation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And is there a list of these um, available for the public to drive around and look at? That's a good question. Um, that would be a police question. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't have that. And then what else is happening? Oh, Saturday, they're doing the Hadley Park and Rec um, Fire Department. They're doing the Lunch with Santa and Mrs. Claus. And that's Saturday at had the elementary school at 12 at like noon time. Yeah. Cool. If Sorry. Anyone, <laughs> I was just looking it, at that. It looks like um, back on December 3rd on the police department Facebook page, they have the posting on the Festival of Lights and there's a link on there. So if mm -hmm. anybody wants last minute and, and it is records at hadleyma.gov the police department okay. used .gov instead of .org. So um, <clears throat> check that out if you need more information. Yes, that's what I was going off of. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. That's about all, a any other announcements? Joyce really missed a meeting she would have loved. I know, short and sweet, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy new year to everybody. See you next year. Yeah, we'll see you next year. Oh yeah, next year. I can't believe it. Is it Christmas like next week? Oh God.
Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> time Sneak flies. My tree's been up for a while, so. <laughs> it looks nice. Thank you. Just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Amy, second by Jane, and Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you, and please all come see me and sign more warrants. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.